Welcome to our tutorial on the Zelta Zip 47G phone. 47G is a model designed for executives and other users who will be spending a lot of time on their phone. It has a color screen and room for a lot of buttons to customize, making it ideal for a heavy user. 47G has a dedicated EHS headset port and it also supports Bluetooth headset with an optional adapter. Alternatively, if you need to place your phone far away from an Ethernet port, we also have an optional Wi-Fi adapter. If your company has our UC client Zach, all our phones are completely compatible with it, so you can control your phone calls from your desktop application or by pressing buttons on the phone. For this video, we will be using the phone buttons only. Check out our videos on Zach to find out how to control your phone calls from the desktop application. We will start with the phone's layout. This device has a colored 480 pixel by 272 pixel display. The four buttons under the screen correspond to the keys currently displayed on the screen and what they do varies based on the situation. For example, in this photo, the phone is in idle state. The options are menu, do not disturb, pick up a call from park and directory for saved phone numbers. The top three buttons on the left of the phone are line keys. You can have up to three simultaneous calls, one call active and the other two on hold. When you are talking on a call on line one, the key will light up solid green. If you place this call on hold, the line will start flashing. The rest of the buttons on the left and right of the screen can be configured to have a variety of functions by your system administrator. There are many custom options for those buttons, a speed dial, busy lamp field to monitor whether a coworker is on the phone, a button to log you into a call group to get call group calls, or a button for initiating on-demand call recording. And there is much more. If you want to know more about the custom buttons, check out our video on those in zeltas.com. But getting back to Zip 47G layout, there is a message waiting indicator in the top right of the screen. It will flash when you have an incoming call. It will also flash continuously if you have a new voice message. Now moving to the main phone panel. On the top right, we've got mute and headset. Mute is pretty self-explanatory, while headset button can be used to switch the audio for call you're on to headset. Obviously, this will only work if you're using a headset. The row below it has the message button. You can click it to access your voicemail box. Next is the designated hold button. To remove a call from a hold, press the button for the second time. To quickly call back a number you just dialed, click redial. After that, we have a dedicated transfer button. We will see it in action later in the video. Lastly, there is a speaker button on the bottom. Moving left on the main panel, there are the directional keys to navigate phone menus. At the center of the keys is OK and underneath is Cancel. It's used to exit menus or end calls. And below the directional pad, you can click the button to adjust the volume. Finally, to dial a number, there is the dial pad. And when you finish dialing, press the send key to initiate a call. It works like a cell phone send button. And that's it for the phone's layout. So let's see it in action. When you get an incoming call, you can pick up the receiver or click the speaker button to answer the phone on speaker. If you're using a headset, you can answer the call with your headset by clicking the headset button, or you can click the button on the headset itself. To make an outbound call, dial the number and pick up the receiver, or you can click the send key or the speaker key. This way the call will immediately ring on speaker. And click on the headset button to hear the call's audio on your headset if you're using one. To end the call, you can hang up the receiver or tap the speaker key to end the call if you're using the speaker. Now let's see what you need to do to check a missed call. The message waiting indicator is flashing to show that I have a new voice message and the display has a note about a missed call. This soft key is now view. I can click on it to see the caller ID for the missed call or I can view my recent call history by clicking on the up key on the directional pad. Use the directional keys to navigate this menu. You can click to make a call right out of the screen. To listen to the voicemail message, click on the voicemail button. You will need to provide your voicemail password. Your first time accessing the voicemail box, 
you will be prompted to set up a password and record your name and greeting. This is a very straightforward process. Just follow the instruction and it will only take a few minutes. Now let's take a look at the options you have while on an active call. You can place the call on hold with the hold key down here or with the soft key up here. This will cause the line to flash. To go back to the call, press the resume soft key or the designated hold button down here. I can park a call so that a coworker can pick it up from another device. I press the park button right here and the screen will show the number of the park slot. For example, this call is in slot 01. To pick up a call, press the pick up soft key and type 01 for the park slot, then send. You can transfer calls to your coworkers and numbers outside your organization. There are several ways to transfer a call. Which way you use depends on whether you want to transfer the call immediately, whether you want to check if the number you are transferring to is valid first, or you may want to talk with the other person before completing the transfer. For example, I am on a call with a customer who needs help from our support department. Very simple and straightforward, I am going to press the transfer button. This automatically places the call on hold for me while I dial the number of the extension. And then I click the transfer button again and the call has been sent. But let's say I want to make sure there is somebody answering the support line calls before I transfer the caller. For example, this is an urgent request from a valued client and I don't want to take a chance that all support agents are too busy to answer the call. I start by pressing the transfer button. With my caller on hold, I type the support extension, but this time I press send. The line is ringing, which means somebody is there to take the call, so I can safely press transfer again. This will send my customer onto the support department. And for the last type of transfer, I want to talk to the support department first before transferring the caller to them. For example, I have a suspicion that the customer's problem is not something support could handle, but I'd like to check with our support rep first. The first few steps are the same as the previous example. I press the transfer button, dial the extension for support, then send. But this time, I stay on the line until the call is answered. Hey John, I got Mr. Customer on another line and he can't get into his account. Oh, you want me to transfer him to you? No problem. All I gotta do is press the transfer button. Or not. This client's behind on billing and needs to talk to the billing department to make sure their account is reactivated. Then I should press the cancel key here since sending the client to the support line isn't gonna help them. For the next feature, we'll discuss how to start a local three-person conference on a Zip47G. Let's continue with the previous example. I found out that Mr. Customer's payment didn't go through and that's why his account was disabled. I'm going to conference in our billing rep so that we can discuss a solution together. I press the conference key. This places the customer's call on hold just like with transfer. Then I dial our billing department and hit send. Hey Tessa, I'm talking to Mr. Customer. Apparently his account was disabled because the last payment didn't go through. Can I conference you in so that we can figure out what's going on? Great! I press the conference key one more time and now all three of us are talking together. If like me you are really bad at remembering extension numbers, you can access the directory of all the contacts on the phone system by pressing the directory button then contacts. From here you can initiate a call directly to the contact. And lastly, I'm going to talk about call forwarding. For example, if I'm going to be traveling for a while and want to forward all my calls to my coworker while I'm out. Start with the menu button, select features, then go to call forwarding. You can forward all incoming calls with always, forward calls only when you are busy with another call, or forward calls that you don't answer. We will do always. I'll switch this line to enabled and on the second line enter the extension of my coworker and press the safe soft key to initiate call forwarding. When I get back to the office, all I need to do is go back to this menu and set call forwarding to disabled. And that's the end of this video. Thank you for watching.